new at 5:30. The host of Face the Nation, Margaret Brennan, joins us now. Margaret, thank you for being with us. Let's get right into it. What's the latest on the U.S. airstrike in Syria? Well, President Biden was just asked by reporters about his decision to carry out the strike overnight, and he said the message to Iran is you cannot act with impunity. Be careful. This is a line being drawn by the president, and the message is you can't put U.S. personnel at risk. Remember last week, uh, Iranian-backed militias fired rockets at uh, some U.S. bases and the U.S. personnel injuring some Americans. Uh, so this is action the president felt was necessary to send a message, but uh, was also chosen carefully to avoid escalating tensions. If they had struck inside Iran, that would be very confrontational. If they'd struck inside Iraq, it would have been very uncomfortable for our allies there. Instead, they chose a border area in Syria where there are quite a lot of militias. So the president is really trying to keep alive his hopes for diplomatic talks with Iran about its nuclear program as well as hostages. Now, the U.S. reached 500,000 COVID deaths this week as we approach a year since the start of pandemic-related shutdowns. How close is Congress now to passing an economic recovery plan? Well, we are looking at mid-March as the hard deadline. Uh, that is when federal unemployment benefits expire. Uh, but overnight, we had this development where, due to procedural rules, uh, that $15 minimum wage provision that was being looked at by the administration, uh, they were told it cannot be in this particular uh, rescue package at this time. Democrats will have to visit it again later. That may help them keep Democrats in line. Remember, the president is considering muscling this through with only Democratic support. That means all 50 Democrats have to be on the exact same page here. No outliers. So taking out that $15 minimum wage provision helps Democrats do that. Uh, but remember, there are still talks happening. This is not done yet. But uh, the president is trying to get it done in the coming weeks. And it's been a little while since we last heard from former President Donald Trump, but that will change this weekend. He is speaking at CPAC in his first public appearance since leaving office. What does the future of the Republican Party look like right now? That is the big question. It's an identity crisis, and we're going to talk about it this Sunday with Ronna McDaniel, who's the head of the RNC. She's trying to straddle two worlds. One argument pushed by Representative Adam Kinzinger, Republican from Illinois, who will also be our guest, is that the party should divorce itself from Donald Trump and separate his rhetoric from the values of the party. On the other hand, you have uh, South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem, someone who is warmly embracing the former president uh, and also viewed as a 2024 hopeful. She may be running for president herself. So uh, you have a lot of desire among some Republicans to capitalize on the former president's popularity with his base and his ability to help them raise money. Uh, they are eyeing re-election in many places in 2022 themselves. And so uh, this is a real debate. We'll dig into it Sunday. Interesting to hear what they all have to say. Margaret, thank you so much. You can join Margaret for Face the Nation. Her guests this week also include Dr. Anthony Fauci. That's Sunday morning at 1030. That's followed by Facing South Florida with Jim DeFitti. This week, Jim devotes the entire program to an exclusive interview with Senator Marco Rubio. That's Sunday morning at 1130.